let us consider this review problem in which we are given that a cylinder is fitted with a 10 cm diameter piston that is restrained by a linear spring. So, we have piston over here which is connected to a spring which is resting on stops this part is connected to a pressurized line of gas So we have air in this line, we have air over here, these are restraints, this is a spring, ok, there is a small opening over here, this is basically figure P3.113 of Sontag, right? So it is given that the spring constant K is equal to 80 kN per meter and the piston is initially resting on the stops. So the initial cylinder volume V1 is equal to 1 liter. The valve is open and the piston begins to rise when the cylinder pressure is 150 kPa. So because of the stiffness of the spring it is only when the pressure builds up to 150 kilopascal that the spring st starts to move. Any pressure less than 150 is unable to move the loaded piston because the spring is very stiff. Okay. So, logically, if we look at the process on the PV plot, the piston when it is not moving will not cause any change in the volume so the volume is fixed at 1 liter up until the pressure reaches 150 kilopascal after this the volume will increase because the piston is moving to the left by the pressure acting on this face and that will be a linear rise because of the spring we will see how So for the piston, if we write the force balance, the forces are as follows. This is P atmospheric, this is the P of the gas. Here will be Kx minus X0. Right? So if we have P gas times A is equal to P atmosphere times A plus k times x minus x naught where x naught is the equilibrium length and x is the length the deviation from the equilibrium length so let x naught be this length or in fact we can consider for convenience that x naught is measured as this and any movement to the left will lead to x minus x naught it's trying to push away the piston in this direction so this gives us the force balance so we see here that P gas times A squared is equal to P atmosphere times A squared plus K times A times x minus x naught is equal to P atmosphere times A squared plus k times the new volume minus k times v naught this is because a times x is the new volume while a times x naught is equal to the initial volume so we see that the pressure of gas and the new volume have a linear relationship that is why 
So the init if the I call this as one state one state two and state three state two to three is a linear line. Okay, good. So when eventually the valve is closed, the cylinder volume is 1.5 liter, and the temperature is 80 degrees Celsius. Very nice. So this volume is 1.5 liter and the state at 3 is 80 degrees Celsius we must find what the mass is at the end of the process in order to find the mass of air we will make use of the ideal gas equation so P at point 3 times V3 equal to M R T where R is equal to R bar by the molecular weight of gas. Similarly T3 is already specified as 80 degrees Celsius. So if we know what the pressure is at state 3 we can find out what the mass is pressure at state 3 is determined by this linear rise all right so let's see let us shift to es so let us see how to do this problem in es i have noted that the initial volume v1 is 1 liter 1 liter when converted to meter cube is multiplied by 10 to minus 3 so we have converted 1 liter to 1 meter cube because we want to keep all the units as MKS we have converted the spring constant which is given as 80 kilonewton per meter to 80 times 10 raised to 3 newton per meter same thing we want to keep them as standard units so we have written down the balance equation over here so this is the balance equation which is P3 times A squared is equal to P atmosphere times A squared plus K times V3 minus K times V1 here V was the final volume is equal to V3 and V0 is the initial volume which is equal to V1. P atmosphere in Pascal is 1.01325. V3 is equal to 1.5 liter which we have converted to meter cube. Fundamentally liter is decimeter cubed. So 1 decimeter 1 decimeter is equal to 0 0.1 meter that is why 1 tm cubed is equal to 10 raised to minus 3 meter cubed that is why the factor of 10 raised to minus 3 keeps appearing the area of the piston is easily find found out because the diameter of the piston is given as 10 centimeter okay so the mass is equal to P3 V3 by R times T3 R is equal to 8.314 times 10 just to 3 divided by the molecular weight of air so so we recall that air is 29% nitrogen and 21% oxygen by mole fraction that is why the molecular weight of air on an average can be written as 0 0.79 times the molecular weight of nitrogen which is 28 plus 0 0.21 times the molecular weight of oxygen which is 32 so when this information is fed to this we should be able to obtain the mass when we run this we obtain an error let's see what the error is we have not defined what m or t3 is so t3 is equal to 80 degrees Celsius but since we are working 
in proper dimensions it should be 80 plus 273 this is in kelvins and 273 is approximate ok so when we run this we see that the mass is 0 0.0011 so it is 11 grams so at the end of it all we have 11 grams of air so in this problem we were able to solve for systems in which they are restrained by springs so springs are nothing but linear elements whenever a spring is being compressed the pressure rise or the pressure fall and the change in volume are related by a linear relationship which is derived through the force balance on the piston by the by using the fact that the piston is not accelerating because we are assuming a quasi static process the piston is at all times equilibrium so this equation is fundamentally an equilibrium equation because we have assumed that the piston is not accelerating through this equation we were able to obtain how the pressure of the gas in this chamber and the increase in the volume are related and we saw that it is linear we were able to then find out the eventual volume uh, the eventual pressure for the corresponding volume and temperature by virtue of which we found out the amount of mass in the system.